never been as oh, uh, uh, park architect. Parkitect. This game is the love child of artist Garrett Randall, programmer Sebastian Mayer, and sound designer A Shell in the Pit, who's an octopus, I guess. So that's that's cool. Fun fact, an octopus's brain isn't actually in its brain. It's actually spread all over its body and in its feet, which explains why it can pick itself up like an RV with a coconut home and relocate. Anyways, back to the video. The idea for the game was conceptualized back in AD 2014 when Garrett and Sebastian thought to themselves, It's been a while. It's been a while. And so, Garrett and Sebastian, along with their octopod friend, set out on their quest to the great beyond and worked tirelessly as a tiny team of three to create Parkitect. Oh, shoot! Oh. <laughs> Uh, wrong footage. Parkitect. It plays as a theme park simulation, a bustling with lifelike crowds, vibrant colors, and a gameplay focus on resource management and pleasing the finicky population, which can seem like a daunting task. You can please some of the people, <laughs> some of the time. Hmm, wise words. Now, you might be wondering things like, but how do I create a successful park? Well, let's ask Steve Jobs, who's the founder of huge corporations like Microsoft and Lego. And some mistakes will be made, by the way. Thanks for the help, Steve. Now, let's build a park. Alcatraz. So as you can see, our park entrance is designed to attract the masses and- Hey! Hey! Will you shut up with the music? Jeez, it's like working with friggin' amateurs. Anyways, our park entrance is clearly attracting huge audiences. And not only that, it obviously sets the precedent for our park. Because once we get the customer, we are keeping the customer. Like forever. The park is one giant circuit. So we'll, we'll get to that later. So the first thing we got to do to create a successful park is learn about our customers. You know, things like oh, what are their preferences and habits? What entertains them? Uh, how do they spend their money? To figure these things out, we are going to screen them for information. And we are going to screen them a lot. Each customer will enter through 66 different screening pods. We'll then take the data we've learned from the screening process and plug it into the park, thus generating a personalized experience for each and every customer. Psych! We're tossing everything we learned from the screening and will promptly be forcing a one-size-fits-all linear experience down their throats starting with our yellow brick road, where our patrons will meet hundreds of dinosaur entertainers on a casual one hour and 15 minute stroll to garner a layout of the park. <coughs> uh, <clears throat> well, uh, no one has made it past the screening process just yet, so we'll grab our bravest patron and we'll take him along for the tour. Come here, Cohen, Schkow, Schkwer, Stu, uh, come here, dude. Up next in our park, following the yellow brick road, is our crown jewel, the ride. Fun fact, the world's first roller coasters were called Catania Gorka, where riders would climb into giant ice cubes or wooden sleds and slide uncontrollably down massive ice ramps constructed in the middle of town. Russian towns, I might add. Catania Gorka, translated from Russian, means roller coaster. 
After all this, the French say their Promenade Ariennes was the first fixed track roller coaster to be constructed in 1817, which is a bit pretentious to call it the first one, considering the Russians were killing themselves on ice mountains for like 40 years prior to this. So I tend to say the Russians were first because, well, they're not French. So anyways, after that breathtaking ride, our customers will need to cool off on our easy peasy lemon squeezy train ride. With a leisurely pace of 1.8 miles per hour, and a runtime of one hour and 45 minutes. Fun fact! The first train ride was made by Richard Trevithick in 1801 called the Puffing Devil, but no one cared about it, so Trevithick moved on to other things, like his iron buoy idea where he pumped air into iron floats and was able to raise sunken ships from the depths of the ocean floor. In fact, he did this once off the shore of a town called Margate, but the guy he did it for decided not to pay him, so he took an axe to the buoys and let the ship sink. Again. After having spent an average of 20 hours and 40 minutes in our park so far, our beloved patrons will embark on a mystical journey through multiple biomes, including fire, water, earth, air, jungle, wherever I wander, and last, but certainly not least, Candyland. No, not that one. This one. Now by this time, I'm sure I know what you're thinking. What about the restrooms? Not to worry, folks. Our restroom is at the center of our challenging labyrinth. This labyrinth is duly titled Labyrintho de la Muerte. That's Hebrew. Speaking of restrooms, fun fact, the first public bathrooms date back to 2nd century BC, but that's not important. What's important is the list of people who died on the can. Judy Garland, O.D., Orville Redenbacher, Bad Spa Day, King Moab, Stabbed, Godfrey IV, Stabbed, Wenceslas III, Stabbed, Arius, Anus Explosion, Edmund Ironside, Stabbed, Yaromir, Stabbed in the Anus, Usagi Kenshin, Stabbed. Anal explosion? Oh, bro. Oh, oh uh, uh, speaking of anus, uh, back to the fun facts here. Did you know that I'm live all the time at twitch.tv forward slash Captain Nemo? I'm probably live right now. And who knows? Maybe I'm talking about anus stuff. It, maybe. Anyways, our massive above ground maze covers a mind boggling 63% of all the land in the park. But that's not all. Right after finishing our first maze, and of course, after taking a picture with Sheldon the skeleton, you're off to Muerte Lenta Bajo Tierra, also known as our underground labyrinth. This is our most expansive attraction to date, featuring 7,441 hours of problem solving fun. Now, if you manage to make it this far and complete the maze, which you definitely couldn't, you would arrive at our last ride of the day, the train ride home. Now, I know how much fun we've all had along the way, so I'd be remiss if I didn't remind you that our park is one big circuit to enjoy for all eternity. <laughs> My name's Owen. Thanks for having fun with Parkitect.